Tyler McMaster, Director LG, other guests, everyone in the room, good morning. Good morning. I'm uh, Alexis Garcin, I'm the Chairman and CEO of Michelin North America, and it is my pleasure to welcome you here in Lexington County at our facility here. And um, you have to know that you are here today at uh, the heart of uh, one of the most important factories for Michelin North America, a community of uh, more than 1,600 people that are manufacturing a lot of the tires you might get if you were to buy a brand new car today. So basically, without our skilled workforce, a large number of uh, the passenger car or light trucks would not be able to be delivered as Michelin is a well-represented brand among all largest OEMs. So I'm very proud of the work that is being uh, done by our people here in this factory, like in the rest, uh, the other 34 plants we operate in North America, as Michelin is the most awarded brand by J.D. Power. We have called Lexington County home since 1981, since we started production. And uh, in 1997, we began production of uh, earth mover tires at the facility next door that we call the uh, US-7. And I'm glad that we could have Chris uh, Gomez uh, heading uh, our Lexington here facility and Jeff for the mining and all the team. So thank you for being with us also too. So you see producing tires for passenger cars, for light trucks, for mining companies, for aircraft, for trucks, and many more. Michelin is one of the largest manufacturing companies in South Carolina, employing more than 8,000 people. And as such, we take our responsibility to our employees and communities very seriously. We strive every day to remain an employer of choice and a company that has a positive impact on the community in which we operate. And one of the reasons why Michelin has continued to invest and grow in the state is the quality and the availability of a skilled and educated workforce. And for nearly 30 years now, Michelin employees have been awarded for achievements in performance, durability, innovation, and customer satisfaction. And they are the reason, they are the only reason why Michelin is the most awarded brand in the tire industry. So our partnerships with the state agencies like uh, South Carolina Department of Employment Workforce have allowed us to continue to recruit and develop a highly skilled workforce that is making the success and the reputation of the Michelin tires every day. And their work to match job seekers with the opportunity that companies like Michelin offer have ensured that we can achieve our business goals and continue to contribute to the human and economical development of our communities. So recent actions taken by Governor McMaster, SCDU, and the state lawmakers, like passing House Bill 3144, providing nearly $40 million South Carolina workforce scholarships for the future investments, are really critical to us. This program incentivizes students to pursue a degree of cert or certification in a high demand field like manufacturing. This greatly enhances the South Carolina technical school system. And because Michelin has a great working relationship with several schools in that system in support of our technical scholars program, this is in the end a win-win. Another example is the House Bill 5150 that also invests in the Be Pro, Be Proud program that encourages a new generation of skilled trade professionals. And it's so important to highlight the critical nature of skilled trade, especially related to our work around apprenticeships and the Michelin Tech Scholars Program. So you see that the partnerships across state governments, state agencies, businesses, and educational institutions are driving workforce development, greater employment, and economic opportunity for South Carolina. So I just want to thank you, Governor McMaster, I want to thank also the SCDU and the state lawmakers to help Michelin and all other manufacturing companies in South Carolina to secure our access to a skilled workforce that is critical to our success and our operations. And I believe that it is a triple win. Of course, it's a win for Michelin and other companies, but it's also a win for the states as we are more likely to invest in states that are attracting 
and investing in a skilled workforce. And last but not least, this is also a win for the communities as we can provide good paying jobs and career development opportunities. So I'm sure that now you are more than willing to learn more about uh, workforce development in our states. And I'm going to turn it over to Dan Elise, the Executive Director of the South Carolina Department of Employment and Workforce. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Alexi. Good morning, everyone. Governor, legislators, business leaders, fellow agency heads, and media. We are happy to welcome you here to help celebrate Workforce Development Month uh, for the uh, state of South Carolina. I could not think of a better place to do it than a Michelin plant. Uh, first of all, our agency has a wonderful relationship with Michelin. We're very involved in many of their plants with their employment services from beginning to end. They're known as a wonderful quality uh, employer in the state. And as Alexi said, they are a big manufacturer. 34 plants throughout the North America, 14 plants in South Carolina with 8,000 employees. And he didn't mention the North American headquarters that are here. We certainly are happy to call Michelin a wonderful industrial neighbor, and we're happy to uh, work with them. And we're very excited about being here today to uh, proclaim this as uh, Workforce Development Month. So thank you very much. <clears throat> For the South Carolina Department of Employment and Workforce, every month is Workforce Development Month. That is what we focus on, and our focus has paid off. Today, we got more people working in the state of South Carolina than pre-pandemic. 74,000 more people working than in February 2020. And the demand for people is even higher. The demand currently for employees is 113,000 jobs. If we could fill them all, that's how high the roles would go at this time. If you look at that, that's a difference of 50,000 over pre-pandemic. So we got 74,000 more jobs in pre-pandemic. The demand for 50,000 more uh, open positions than we had in pre-pandemic. So we're really looking at a business demand of about 125,000 more jobs than we had pre-pandemic. So our job is to figure out how to get people to all these openings that they've got. And we've certainly got uh, certain challenges in doing that, but that's what workforce development uh, is all about. <clears throat> Since I started with the agency uh, <clears throat> back in 2019, uh, we have focused on creating uh, a workforce. Uh, <clears throat> and in doing that, we work with our partners, many of whom are here today in looking at uh, employees, job seekers, to see what they need. Is it education? Is it training? Is it a shift that's shorter than 12 or shorter than eight hours? Is it a four hour shift that they need to go to work? Is it childcare, transportation, resume, interview skills, just a connection to get their foot in the door or maybe a second chance? Um, <clears throat> these are the things we do along with our partners such as Voc Rehab and Commission for the uh, Blind who are sitting up front here today uh, and things that we do very well in South Carolina. But now we are changing our focus and we are focusing 100% on filling the demand for employees that our employers have throughout the state. How do we do it? Well, we've got our statutorily required work search that we do for anyone who is in uh, who, who is receiving unemployment benefits. That by itself doesn't do an awful lot, but that in conjunction with other things like the recall task force that we implemented to basically help the restaurants and hospitality industry get their employees back to work at the beginning of the pandemic does work. Our weekly job match, which we started during the pandemic, has been an enormous success. There we take the name of every person who drew an unemployment check the prior week and we send it to the applicable local work area where that employee lives. And that person's name goes through a job search with all the open positions we have. And that person gets an email and a text message saying, Dan Elsie, there are five jobs that you qualify for in your commuting area. You ought to go apply. Throughout the pandemic, the last number I heard was we had sent out over 8 million messages. I'm sure the number is higher uh, by this time. In addition to the weekly job match, we took it a step further. We partnered with many employers throughout the state of South Carolina. 
where we knew exactly what they needed in their jobs, and we matched them with employees, and where we had this really good match and a partner employer, we didn't just suggest that the employee go and apply and apply. We mandated that the employee go and apply for the job and accept it if offered. We call it enhanced referral. What it does is it gets the employees, the job seekers, the unemployed, looking quicker for jobs than they may have otherwise. It's been a uh, huge success. We started a new program, which we call RAP, W-R-A-P, Workforce Reemployment Assistance Program. And what we do with this program is we ensure that everybody who files for unemployment has someone to talk through to from day one throughout the process. When we first got started in the pandemic, you filed your claim. If we didn't hear from you again for 20 weeks, you drew for 20 weeks and then the federal benefits kicked in and you drew for six months, 12 months, 24 months. Uh, but that's not the case uh, anymore. You file for unemployment, even before you're found eligible, you're gonna get a call. And it's gonna be from one of our, our employees saying, here's what you gotta do to stay qualified, certified, work search, you gotta do it, don't mess that up. And then we talk to them about resumes and interviewing and training that they may need then we schedule a face-to-face -face meeting with every single person drawing unemployment. They have to come in, sit down, mandatory, and talk to a counselor who can help them look for a job. Many of them leave that meeting with a number of suggested places to go to apply, maybe Michelin, for a job. Others leave with a mandate that you have to go and apply at these places because we have a perfect match and we have employer partners that we work with uh, in that area. Job fairs are not new, virtual job fairs are. We do them everywhere and as often as we can. We have a contract and provide free virtual work fair, uh, job fairs for our, all of our local offices, 46 of them throughout the state of uh, South Carolina, unlimited number that they can do. And last but not least, we sit down and we do individual plans for employers and people say, well, yeah, Dan, I know you probably do that for Michelin, but how about ABC company down the road with 25 employees? has nothing to do with size. It's free, we don't get paid for it. So whether you are ABC company or you're Michelin, you'll get the same kind of attention and the same sort of effort in putting together a, a game plan to help you find uh, employees. Now most people, when they think about the Department of Employment and Workforce, they know our four missions and they are federal and we're supported by federal grants and that is unemployment. We run the unemployment program through, <coughs> um, for the state of South Carolina through the federal government. We do workforce development, that's the federal training program. We do employment services, that's the job matching, the free employment agency. And those two groups are spread out throughout the state of South Carolina. You see them in the many SC work centers, you probably drove by one coming out here uh, uh, today. Uh, <clears throat> we do that uh, and we do a lot more. And I wanna talk to you today about a few of the creative things that we're doing in the area of workforce development that, that we think will help out. First, we run a database to help people find jobs. And that's good, we've done that for a long time, but we have upgraded it. You've heard the ads for Indeed. Well, you can get the same thing on our SWAS, South Carolina Online, uh, South Carolina Works Online Service. And what you can do there as an employer, you can go in and say, I'm looking for a production employee in Lexington County, I'm paying this, and that will do a search for you. And you will have the names of all the people who fit that category. Uh, in Lexington County that you can look at. And it works from the reverse. An employee who's looking for a job, as maybe a mechanic, can do the exact same thing and see all the employers who come up and they can then decide where they want to, uh, uh, to apply. <clears throat> the, uh, next thing I wanna to talk to you about is the uh, labor force participation rate. Most of you, here are familiar with workforce in South Carolina, and you know that our labor force participation rate is not good. You also know that we are considered by most people throughout the country to be a poor state. And we're a poor state in their minds for a number of reasons, but the main one in my mind is that we don't have the same percentage of people who get a job and work in South Carolina as other states do and we're not even close to the average, almost five percentage points between us and the average. So the question is, why is this? And the second question is, what do you do about it? Well, we're approaching that problem 
from two different directions. Uh, some of you know we have set up a labor force participation rate task force where we have sought out some of the best labor economists in the United States from academia, from research companies, and from businesses and ask them to participate on this task force to help us figure out why that fact exists in the state of South Carolina. And we ask them to do it for free, no pay. We did not get turned down by one single person that we approached. That task force is at work. We've put out two solicitations. Other work is being done, both survey work and research is being done at this time. We expect to have an answer this year to the questions of why we have bad labor force participation rate and what we can do about it. That's our approach to a problem in one way, research. Get somebody who to come in from the outside and help us how to uh, figure out how to do it. The second approach is totally different, but still on the same subject. Tomorrow at 3 o'clock, we'll be in Lawrence, South Carolina, where we'll be meeting with community groups. We met with leadership, uh, county uh, administrator, and economic development people two weeks ago and laid out our plan. We've been working for months and months on something we have called the one county pilot. Not very creative, but everybody at the agency knew what it was about. Uh, and we have decided that our one county is going to be Lawrence, and it's Lawrence for a number of reasons. It's the size, it's the unemployment rate, it's the number of counties around them that have a lot of jobs that people commute to. So we have picked uh, Lawrence County. And tomorrow we'll be meeting with the community and we'll be laying out the program. And here it is. We, through our database, can identify everybody in Lawrence County that had a job in 2019, put them on a list. Then we will run that list against everybody who filed an unemployment claim in 2020 or 2021. If they filed an unemployment claim, keep them on the list. If they didn't, take them off the list. The third thing we do is we run them through our current uh, database to look at how many of them are currently working now. If they're working now, they're off our list. If they're not working now, they're on our list. They had a job in 19, they filed an unemployment claim, they're not working what now? The question is really twofold. Why are they not working now and what can we do about it? Well, we're calling this direct connect because this is not big picture. This is not labor economists doing surveys and looking at it statewide top down. This is hands on, bottom up, where we will go to people. The reason we choose those who filed unemployment claims and who are not working is because we got data on them. We know their previous occupation, we know their experience, we know their education, we got contact information, we know where they live, we know their phone number, we know their email address. We can contact them, we can talk to them about why aren't you working and what would it take, and that's what we're gonna do. We will hit the ground with a team of people. Now we learned a lot of things in the pandemic, and one of the things we learned was when we make a phone call, a lot of people don't listen to it. When we email people, a lot of people don't read it and don't respond. So we are not just relying on social media and our email addresses to get in touch with people and phone numbers. We are bringing the community in, the churches, the nonprofits in the area who know the people we're talking about and who can pick up the phone and say, Thomas, how about calling them and talking to them about why you don't want to work or what you want to do? So set up a meeting. That's our goal, to have a meeting with everybody. There are approximately 1,200 and some people that meet this uh, uh, selection criteria that I just went over in Lawrence County, and it will be our goal to talk to every one of them. Now, tomorrow in our presentation, we're going to lay out what it'll mean economically if 100, 200, 300 of these people will take a job right now. Even in a county as small as Lawrence, if you create that number of jobs, 100, 200, 300, you're talking about an incredible impact on payroll revenue in that county. Now, what we're going to do when we finish, it's a pilot, when we finish that, we will also have at the same time the results from the smart people who are looking at it from top down who are going to tell us what to do. We're going to merge it together and then we're going to take it statewide. We're going to hire teams of people to take what we're doing to every county in South Carolina, prioritizing rural first and working our way down. So Greenville County, you won't see us for quite a while. Um, but we think this is a possible solution to the issue we've got in the state of South Carolina. And it is, in my mind, a very, very serious issue. <clears throat> 
we got another issue we're facing, and that's cybersecurity. We know the issue we're going to face. We got a lot of defense contractors in South Carolina. Defense contractors now have to meet certain uh, uh, cybersecurity requirements to keep their contract. If they don't, they lose them. Many of them are small, don't have the sophistication to figure out how to uh, how to handle this. We have worked through Department of Defense grants with them to get them consulting services uh, uh, on that. Uh, but what we're also doing is looking at the fact that workforce is going to be so expensive in the cyber industry. The demand is great. We're now no longer competing with just South Carolina employers, but people from New York and L.A. because they'll allow these people to work from home. So the wages are going up. We know they're going up dramatically. We know the demand for the jobs, and we know how many we're creating each year through our educational systems, and there are gaps and huge gaps in that, uh, uh, in that area. So what are we doing about that? Well, number one, we're offering scholarships right now to every employer. We told Michelin about it this morning. Uh, any employer that has got employees in South Carolina is eligible to compete, to uh, participate. All you got to do is apply. <clears throat> if accepted, give us the names of the people you want to go through it. Uh, our pitch to small employers is you're not going to be able to afford uh, paying the market rate. So take a good employee you've got working right now, maybe in assembly, uh, maybe in quality or something, offer them an opportunity to go through this training, CompTIA training. And they can get a certificate, either A plus, IT, security plus, meaning they can do cyber jobs, 100% free to the employer and to the uh, employee who would get the uh, who would get the training. Uh, generals here, I don't see him right now, but we do a lot of military. Uh, we focus on it uh, an awful lot for two reasons. Number one, we think we owe it to people who've served, and number two, we need their skills. We need to put those people to uh, work. We, by ourselves, have nine different programs that focus on uh, uh, military people. We work with, I see Director Sterling down here, uh, with the uh, incarcerated who are in the Department of uh, Corrections. For years, we've worked with them to help people get ready to get a job when they get out of prison. Today, we've changed our philosophy. We don't want to help them get ready to get a job. We want them to get a job before they get out of prison. And that's why we have implemented the virtual job fairs for people who are still behind bars who can interview with a company who's hiring and willing to hire someone who is uh, uh, coming out of jail. The last thing I want to mention here <coughs> is a grant that we will be announcing today. Uh, it is an expansion of our connection points. In South Carolina, you file for unemployment, you've got to do it on a computer. No paper applications accepted. you got to do it on a computer. Uh, if you've uh, got a problem doing it, then you call our call center or you go to one of our local SC Works centers. Uh, but there are also other options. We have 150-some libraries who are signed up as connection points, and they've got computers in there designated, dedicated to, uh, the, to workforce, helping people file a claim or helping people find a job. And those librarians have been trained on how to uh, utilize this. We're embarking on a major expansion of this, particularly in rural areas, where we're going to go beyond libraries and we're going to recruit nonprofits and religious-based organizations to participate in this. And we'll be providing grant money to people to set up a very simple computer lab, go through the training, and help people in their area uh, get a job. This month, we'll be celebrating an awful lot, and there are many things you can go to, 19 job fairs and hiring events, 177 workshops, 21 career coach engagements, Be Pro, Be Proud, we'll be in 16 different locations, two lunch and learn series, an employer roundtable, and four webinars with our labor market information people. How on earth will you keep track of all this? Well. There's a calendar on our website, and it goes in the media. You've got your package. You will see the link uh, to it, and you can stay up to date just by clicking on your county to see what's going on. So what we're doing is a lot, but it's really just a beginning, and it's just the tip of the iceberg compared to what our uh, fellow agencies do, like Voc Rehab, like Department of Social Services, like the Commission for the Blind, Veterans Affairs, State Tech, State Workforce Development Board, Chairman Freeland, sitting up here at the front, and I want to commend him on what a fine job they do, and all of our local boards 
who are locally operated, locally controlled, uh, but do just a wonderful job in coming up with <coughs> creative solutions to uh, workforce issues. So <coughs> I uh, want to encourage everybody to take part in this, go out and learn something about uh, workforce development. I will certainly uh, uh, echo the comments about the uh, funding for occupational training. It was needed desperately as well, money well spent, and it's going to help South Carolina a great deal in the future. I will now turn the program over to Governor Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was informative. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, let me say, uh, bonjour, comment allez-vous aujourd'hui? Moi, très bien. Merci beaucoup. Seven years of French and two trips to Paris, and that's all I know. <laughs> Glad to be here. Uh, we are, have talked about the government services pro provided. I don't think there's another state that has the communication, collaboration, and cooperation among the different agencies, the General Assembly. Uh, the, the cabinet agencies and, and uh, Danny Ellsley has done a marvelous job with a great team. I really don't think there's anything like that in the country that, that's being done uh, on the scale uh, and in the manner we're doing it. But I want to thank all the employers who've come here. And, and Michelin, I think, set up and uh, announced, or no, first built in Anderson in 1973. That was our largest foreign investment, $200 million back then, which was a dump truck full of money back then. But it was, and we appreciate the uh, participation, we appreciate the reputation and everything that you bring to our state. And we're glad to have you and we hope that we continue to expand. But I want to thank all the businesses, large and small, everybody working for taking a risk. Those of us who are in the government, we try to make things easy, try to get things out of the way, try to eliminate roadblocks, red tape and all of the above and to provide sort of a framework with which, uh, within which you can work. But it is the employers, it is the businesses, it is the people that put their money on the line and their time and talents and take the risk. And often it works, sometimes it doesn't, but there's always, always another day. So I want to tell our employers, we in South Carolina, we in, in government, understand that South Carolina's business is business. And without business, development, and growth, we don't have anything. We talk about life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Well, you can't do any of that if you're not living in a place that's, that's safe, where you can work, where you can build a career, your children are safe when they go to school, and where you can try to develop your talents to their fullest ability. So that's what we're about. And we want to, I want to thank Michelin for having us uh, and say that our workforce in the country, entire country is in the crossroads. The things that Mr. Elsley has mentioned are going to keep taking us forward. One good decision we made a couple of years ago was not to shut down. When everybody else was doing it, most of the states, a lot of the states in the South did not, but a lot of others did. And had it not been for those states that used common sense and did not shut down, did not shut down, if it hadn't been for that, uh, I wonder where the country would be right now. But South Carolina is booming. We use common sense uh, in our approach to business, and it works. Somebody said uh, common sense is like deodorant. The people that really need it often don't use it. But we use common sense. Another one with the, with the virus, particularly virus, was um, the experts and science says this and that. And I'm not criticizing the experts. We, God bless them. We need them. We, need, we all need help. But uh, science would tell you that tomatoes are fruit, but practicality and experience says you don't put tomatoes in a fruit salad. That's common sense. That's what we used, and it worked. One other program we have, uh, Danny, you mentioned it briefly, is what Will, General Will Grimsley has done. South Carolina has the first and only agreement, statewide agreement with the United States Army. We signed it up at Fort Jackson just recently, where uh, people going into the service can sign up for the program and coming out, they will have job offerings or job interviews with at least five South Carolina companies, at least if they want to do that. That'll help recruitment, but also it'll help those trained veterans to stay in our state with their skills, their insights, 
and the stability that they bring. Uh, we have 450, 445 small businesses that employ over 830,000 people, and a lot of them are in businesses that were created when Michelin and other companies came in as big businesses, and that, that creates waves of employment and businesses and imagination. In 2000, since 2017, we've announced over 62,000, 65,200 jobs with 19.5 billion in capital investment. In, two, in 2021, we had 18,000 new jobs with 5.7 billion in capital investment. And so far this year, we've announced over, this is just jobs we've announced, not all the jobs that have been created, but those that we've been involved with and announced, over 6,900 jobs and over 2.4 billion in investment. And so we're gonna keep going as Danny Elsey described and others will describe. The workforce scholarships for the future is a real key. I just wanna remind everybody, South Carolina's technical college system started back in the either late 50s or early 60s. Uh, we started uh, about the same time they were starting some trade schools in other states. But we took a little different course. And we, we as technology and sophistication, uh, sophistications is emerged, our technical colleges developed the kind of talent to teach and train people in those areas. And today it, it is, with our 16 colleges, they are the best in the United States. We have scholarships for people who want to go there. Uh, we, uh, I can't remember how many thousands have utilized them already, but Paula LaCroix, that's something we want to continue because it works. Because you can get a certificate or, or, or a certificate or a, a, a associate's degree or other certification that will open the door to our people to a mass of jobs there. And also in the Greenville Technical College, uh, they invented a four-year degree in advanced manufacturing. What's that do? Most technical colleges, just a, a two-year associate's degree, which in most big companies will not open the door to management level positions. But at Greenville Tech, you can get a four-year degree, bachelor's degree in advanced manufacturing that'll open that door. Those are the kind of things, the innovative things that we're doing in South Carolina that can make, make a big difference. Be pro, be proud, you mentioned that. You mentioned the 47 uh, work centers. Uh, we just, we all, we realize, everyone here realizes that, that the key, the key to our prosperity, the key to the happiness of our children, they have to get educated. That's why we have money for no child will be turned away from four year kindergarten in South Carolina. We put that money in the budget. We want to take them all the way through. When they get through at high school, go into the military, go to work, go to college, either a, a technical college, a four year college, go on to the research universities, go as far as you want to go. But there's not a better place to do this than here in our state. I'm the chairman of the, the Southern state's energy board and we were, had a meeting recently in charleston everybody wants to go to charleston everybody wants to go to greenville people are coming from all over the place if uh, you want to buy land now's a good time price is not going to go down but we had that had that meeting and it is it is so clear that is it's the southern states it's where the sun shines where we have those right to work laws where we have legislate toys that understand business, where we have a culture where people get along and don't fight, but also we have a culture, as the military will tell you, uh, if, when, when push comes to shove, we will fight a common enemy coming at us. There's something different. There's something good that manufacturers, big businesses, small business see about the people of South Carolina. So we are, we are they say a, a, a poor, uh, small state. I, I would debate that. It depends on exactly, as you said, what it is they're measuring. But if you measure potential, measure happiness, uh, measure the quality of life, there's no place uh, in the world like this one. Ronald Reagan said, the best is yet to come. The, uh, the singer said, nothing could be finer than to be in Carolina in the morning. Both of them were right. And here we are. We can prove it. And thank you very much. This is a proclamation, State of South Carolina Governor's Proclamation. Whereas South Carolina has a robust and flourishing economy on the global stage with a record setting 5.7 billion in capital investment and 18,000 new jobs in 2021 alone. And whereas throughout the coronavirus pandemic, South Carolina's steadfast commitment to reemployment was evident and 
as the unemployment rate steadily remained well below the national average and continues to decline with each passing month with a current unemployment rate of only 3.3 percent and whereas an impressive 122,000 new hires in March of 2022 and 115,841 current job openings in South Carolina State Workforce Development Database, South Carolina Works online services demonstrate an abundance of opportunities afforded to the South Carolina workforce. And whereas the South Carolina Works system, which Mr. Elsey mentioned, is comprised of the Department of Employment and Workforce, Vocational Rehabilitation Department, Commission for the Blind, Department of Social Services, Department of Education, Department of Commerce, Technical College System, and others. And whereas this diverse network of officials, educators, business and industry leaders, and workforce development professionals work assiduously to meet the demands of our great state's rapid growth and provide South Carolinians with numerous pathways to a rewarding career. And whereas the innovative initiatives to provide soft skills training for our state's youth, reskilling and upskilling for current workers and virtual hiring events for streamlined recruitment exemplify the commitment of South Carolina's workforce development system to supporting a strong workforce for the needs of today and building a workforce ready for the needs of tomorrow and whereas South Carolina's greatest resource has always been and always will be her people. Now, therefore, I, Henry McMaster, governor of the great state of South Carolina, do hereby proclaim September 2022 as Workforce Development Month throughout the state and encourage all South Carolinians to celebrate the Palmetto State's accomplishments in workforce development and honor the workforce development professionals who continuously strive to prepare our state's people for the workforce of the future. Signed by me, Henry McMaster, on behalf of 5.2 million proud, happy South Carolinians, and thank you very much. Thank you, sir. And it is so proclaimed. Good morning. I'm Bob Morgan, President and CEO of the South Carolina Chamber of Commerce. And Governor and all of our distinguished guests, it's great to be with you this morning. It's appropriate to be here at Michelin, such a leader in our state in so many ways, as we've already heard. And I can't help but point out that Michelin's own Will Whitley, uh-oh, Will was down, Will's in the back now. Uh, Will will be next year's chair of the South Carolina Chamber of Commerce, continuing the strong leadership that your corporation shows uh, day in and day out in our community. The vision of the South Carolina Chamber of Commerce is for our state's economy to be the most vibrant in the United States, creating opportunity and prosperity for all. We are in the middle of conducting what we call our grassroots tour, which is a listening road show that will take us to almost 50 chambers of commerce between August and October. We have already heard from hundreds of business leaders and the early results are clear. While folks are increasingly pessimistic about the U.S. economy, they remain optimistic about South Carolina's economy, and they think that our state is the great place to run and start a business. However, the number one challenge we are hearing by far is that there are not enough workers to fill the jobs that are available. We've heard just this morning that there are more than 100,000 unfilled jobs in South Carolina. Can you imagine how much better our economy would be doing if we could fill the majority of those jobs? Here's what we're hearing more specifically. When, and I underscore when, a company can get enough applications for an opening, most often the applicants don't have the skills that are needed. When the applicants do have the skills and take the job, oftentimes they don't even show up on day one or they don't make it through their first week. When they do stay longer, increased competition from other employers and wage increased pressures simply add fuel to the growing challenge of inflation which is also a factor in keeping our economy from realizing its full potential. We applaud all efforts to address the workforce challenges facing our state. Governor, we appreciate you and your team, particularly Du and all of the other agencies that are here today for all that you're doing to put a spotlight on this challenge and for consistently partnering with the private sector. As Governor McMaster so often reminds us, South Carolina's greatest asset is our people. 
people who make things, who move things, who run businesses of all sizes and types, who grow things to feed and clothe us, people who serve those who visit our beautiful state. We are talking about the very people who, in fact, will make our economy the most vibrant to be found anywhere. The South Carolina Chamber of Commerce is grateful to be a part of today's Workforce Development Month proclamation, and we join you in celebrating our workforce here in September. But we all know workforce development is not a one-month challenge in South Carolina. South Carolina is a state every day is about workforce development, creating an opportunity for our citizens and making our businesses even more successful. Thank you for the opportunity to be with you. It is a pleasure to invite to the podium a friend and partner to all of us, Sarah Hazard, the President and CEO of the South Carolina Manufacturers Alliance. Thank you. Thank you. I'm honored to join today's proclamation ceremony and being a part of this um, important recognition in our state. So thank you, Government Master and Director Elsie. Like many industries, the manufacturing community's number one focus is workforce development. You know, we have over 250,000 South Carolinians employed in manufacturing today, and we know that there's at least 6,000 job openings posted online right now for manufacturing. So as we're focusing on workforce development, you know, not only in finding skilled and ready workers for today is what we need to do, but also cultivating the skills necessary for our industry to thrive for many years to come. And that's what makes South Carolina so special. As a state, we are focused on making sure our people have the resources, the abilities, and the access to strengthen their economic opportunities through meaningful workforce programs that lead to success and to a brighter future. From SC dues, incumbent worker training scholarship program, to Ready SC, to SC Future Makers, to the 16 technical colleges, and many other impactful workforce development programs we have here, our state puts its people first by making sure that our citizens prosper. You know, where we are today, right here at the Michelin Lexington plant, it's a prime example of workforce excellent culture that we have in South Carolina. Michelin has continued to invest here because they know that the cooperative spirit that we have for ensuring our workforce meets the technical capabilities that they need every day and that, we're, that it is something that they can count on and that they can continue to count on for many years to come. So again, thank you, Government Master and Director Elsie, for recognizing our state's great workforce community and the important work that's done every day to make South Carolina a better place to work and live. And next, I would like to introduce Felicia Sanders, the Chief Human Resources Officer for Michelin North, North America. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Good morning. Again, I'm Felicia Sanders, Chief Human Resources Officer for Michelin North America. The proclamation that you heard this morning highlights the significance of our state's current workforce, which we all agree is really the engine behind our economy. At the same time, it's important to acknowledge the need to address the current gaps that you've already talked about, as well as building those skills for the future to help the state build its economy five years from now, 10 years from now. Michelin, like many other companies, is fully committed to helping to drive this kind of engagement. We remain very committed to supporting those critical efforts in building a strong, well-educated, and thriving workforce of the future. This will be accomplished through coordinated efforts by our state government, state agencies, our local communities, educational institutions, and of course, business leaders. I'm confident in the work that we've talked about this morning. I'm very confident that we can begin to close that gap on some of those local job markets and to really penetrate that workforce that isn't working today and increase participation in the labor force. We are so proud of our extensive operations here in South Carolina, and we're very proud of the workforce in this state. On behalf of Michelin North America, I'd like to thank each of you for attending today's event. A special thanks to the leadership team here at US 5 and its neighbor US 7, two of many of our important sites here in South Carolina. We appreciate everyone's attention this morning. 
We really appreciate you coming out, and we look forward to seeing a prosperous future for the state of South Carolina. Thank you, everyone. Anyone have questions? We got a lot of answers up here. <laughs> Anyone? In that case, we are in adjournment. Thank you very much. <laughs>